I had an autoimmune condition that was causing my thyroid to be Ooh. overactive. So that's why I was having all these terrible symptoms of insomnia, weight loss, tremors, panic attacks. You are watching the documentary show. Thank you for staying with us. Now, one in eight women will develop thyroid problems during their lifetime. However, thyroid disease is still widely misunderstood. And my next guest has made it her mission to help patients address the root cause of thyroid disorders. Here's my friend, functional medicine physician, Dr. Amy Myers. Dr. Myers, thank you. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Oh, thanks for being here. I know you're so busy and it's a, it's a, it's a really a privilege. So tell me about what happened with you. You really were affected personally with thyroid uh, an issue, weren't you? I was. My second year of medical school, I started having uh, tremors and weight loss. Even my legs were weak as I was going down the stairs. Insomnia, uh, panic attacks actually. Uh, drove me to the doctor. I was a relatively healthy person or a very healthy person. I didn't even have a doctor. And finally, after these panic attacks and this hand tremor, I went to the doctor. She told me, she just blew me off, told me it was medical school stress, told me, oh, you're learning all these different diseases. You just think you have something you don't really. Like, very typical, many women are, you know, sort of dismissed by their doctors. No blood tests, no nothing. Well, I insisted. I mean, she said, this is stress. And I said, no, absolutely, this is not stress. I have dealt with a lot of stressful things. Something more is going on. I need a full workup. So You've been in the Peace Corps. What else have you done before medical school? Uh, Peace Corps. My mother had passed away very unexpectedly from pancreatic cancer. I said, I've never handled stress like this. So she called me back about a week later. I'm not quite sure she apologized. And she said, you have Graves' disease which I know many of your listeners are probably more familiar with Hashimoto's, which is an underactive thyroid. Right. I had an autoimmune condition that was causing my thyroid to be Ooh. overactive. So that's why I was having all these terrible symptoms of insomnia, weight loss, tremors, panic attacks. It was terrible. So and then what happened? So then I was, um, well, first I didn't really do anything. I had entered medical school with the idea that I would actually practice holistic medicine, even though I was in oh, really? conventional medicine. So I was the president of the complementary alternative interest group. So I actually did Chinese medicine first, which I, I don't always talk about. That didn't really help, so I eventually um, did a medication. So with Graves' disease, your choice in conventional medicine is either ablation of your thyroid, so blowing it up like Hiroshima, surgical removal, or medication to stop it from overproducing. So I thought the medication was the lesser of the three sure, evils. Sure. So I started that. Two weeks later, feeling really, really terrible, went back for blood work. My liver was beginning to fail. Yeah. So oh I had boy. something called toxic hepatitis. Nice. Every, one thing after another. And then one, you finally, did you get it ablated then? So I eventually had it ablated. And then that was a whole nother roller coaster. Then I went hypothyroid. So I know what all those people with Hashimoto's were feeling Don't like I. weight gain, hair falling out, fatigued, cold. Went to my doctor, lab test, totally normal. Um, but I did start some supplemental thyroid hormone. And then after medical school, I became an emergency physician. And then I realized, you know, I want to get back to my roots of of functional uh, just functional medicine. So I learned about that and dove in, took all the training and found out the real root cause of why I got what I got and have successfully helped many people reverse their condition. Yeah, thousands of people. And she went from Graves' disease where, you know, the, what happens is that your thyroid is just pumping out everything. So you're basically just jumping out of your skin. And then when you take it out, when she says ablation, I mean, the thyroid's not, thyroid's not functioning at all, so nothing's coming out. And so then you go from one to the other and then you have to give hormone to replace it, that doesn't work very well. So you, know, you go from one to another. And what did you find out when, when, when you did your own studies? You're already a physician, but really they don't train us on this at all in conventional medicine. What, you did your own research, and what did you find out? So just in dealing with myself and then working literally with thousands of patients from around the world, I have sort of come up with five root causes for pretty much any thyroid condition or autoimmune condition, which is our diet, the diets that we're eating, heavily processed now, GMO foods, leaky gut, uh, which we can get into if you want, but just, you know, dysfunction in the gut, toxins, infections, and stress seem to be um, I like to think of it as a pie chart. Somebody could come into my office with the same, you know, Hashimoto's and Hashimoto's, and one could have dietary issues like a gluten sensitivity, and somebody else could have uh, candida and leaky gut, whereas somebody else could have dietary issues and toxins or stress. So it's not always the same for everybody, but those five pieces of that puzzle tend to be for everybody with thyroid and autoimmune dysfunction. And knowing what you know now, would you say that surgical removal of thyroid should be your last resort? Absolutely. I have helped many people successfully reverse their Graves' disease. So by following awesome. my program, people have not had to ablate nor have surgery. Now, there are cases where you might need to do that, such of as course. cancer. But if you can do dietary and lifestyle why changes, 
why not? Yeah, I always tell my patients, if you can avoid the knife, it's always good. Now, listen, it doesn't mean that if you need it, it doesn't mean you say, well, you know, I watched Dr. Nandy and Dr. Myers, and they said yeah, I shouldn't do it. It's not, the, it's not, that's not the message. What we're trying to give you are alternatives. What we're trying to give you are choices, right? We talk about being your own health hero, and she did. She said, listen, I, you know, I've, I have these problems. I've got to fix them myself, and that's what we're trying to do to empower patients. We have to take a break. When we come back, Dr. Myers is going to stick around and talk about how to get your life back after thyroid disease, please stay with us. Most thyroid dysfunction is autoimmune in nature. So when I hear autoimmunity and thyroid, I think about gluten, I think about dairy, which are very, very inflammatory foods. Welcome back, and thank you for staying with us on the Dr. Nandy Show. I am talking with the amazing Dr. Amy Myers and how to achieve and maintain good thyroid health. So Dr. Myers' book is called The Thyroid Connection. It's a best-selling book. It addresses a lot of the questions about the thyroid. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. So, you know, what we talked about diet, and we started talking about diet in the, in, in the last segment, but what foods should people, you know, to, to try to at least put in their diet for good thyroid health, in your opinion? Yeah, so there are a number of nutrients that are needed to make thyroid hormone. Sure. And in fact, nutrient deficiencies is one of the main reasons that I see people aren't producing the adequate thyroid hormone. So you want to be making sure that you're eating a lot of rich organic fruits and vegetables, getting vitamin A, getting your B vitamins, iodine, selenium, zinc. All of these are super important either to make your thyroid hormone, convert it into the active, what's called free T3, or get it into the cell where it works. And people don't even know about these things because they just think if you just eat anything, you should be fine. But really, you need these nutrients. Do you talk about in your book specifically the foods you talked about and how to um, and, and how to incorporate that in your diet? I talk about foods to incorporate and also importantly foods to eliminate. Ah, so they're yes. also inflammatory and toxic foods that are inflammatory not only to your immune system but also your thyroid. So most thyroid dysfunction is autoimmune in nature. So when I hear autoimmunity and thyroid I think about gluten, I think about dairy which are very very inflammatory foods. The gluten molecule looks actually very similar to our thyroid tissue to our immune system. So there's a process. They get fooled, don't they? Yes, yeah, something called molecular mimicry where your immune system goes to attack the gluten and it accidentally attacks your thyroid in, instead. So that's one of the theories behind both Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. And it, listen, you know, Dr. Myers is not saying if you eat gluten, you're fine, that you should now all go out and be gluten-free. It's the fact that if you have problems and you're trying to find solutions and you're not getting any, these are some of the things you can do. And what about toxins in your environment? Um, how does that play a role? Sure, so same thing with that thought process behind molecular mimicry. Things like um, mercury can also look very similar to the thyroid tissue, so as the body goes to attack it. Also, um, uh, also things like bisphenol A and phthalates, these things that we're starting to hear about in plastics, they can mimic something called, or mimic estrogen on, in our body, and as our estrogen rises in our body, it binds more of our thyroid hormone. Got so it. there are a whole host of toxins that I talk about. In fact, I have a five-part strategy of how to reverse and overcome both Hashimoto's and Graves in my book, and I talk about the toxins, infections, stress, and the dietary factors. And then that, that, that was also called BPA, and the bisphenol A she's talking mm -hmm. about, it's also called BPA. And, and when it binds to these estrogen, there, there's less available. So you don't have, you feel like your thyroid's underactive, feels sluggish, less energy. I mean, anybody who practices medicine knows that so many of, the, of our patients come in and all they can say is, I'm tired all the time and I can't do anything about it. What other lifestyle changes, and, and if you could talk about emotional toxicity too. So many of us are in these super toxic relationships and you know we, we're, we're continually staying in those. How does that also affect, and you talk about this in your book as well, how does that affect your thyroid? So stress in and of itself can increase our cortisol level. Yes. And when we have high cortisol, um, our thyroid produces uh, free T4 or T4, which is more the storage form. And what most doctors aren't checking is something called free T3. And a lot of people are not making that conversion from T4 to T3. And when you have high cortisol levels and high stress levels, whether from a previous trauma or current trauma or current stressors that are going on, it blocks that conversion. And it converts more to something called reverse T3. So I like to think of 
free T3 is the gas and reverse T3 is the brake. So we all want more gas. And when we don't have enough gas, we have to wonder why. Well, both the toxins can cause a problem. Stress can cause a problem by converting more of that to the reverse or the brake. Exactly. Also, as we increase our as we increase our cortisol, our estrogens can increase as well, and then we, again, Same bind problem. more thyroid hormones. And, and you know what Dr. Meyer is saying is so important, because if you have these events every day, thousands and thousands of times, then guess what? Your body just cannot keep up. You cannot keep up with these small insults, and then you just have less thyroid available. Talk to us about the five-step plan again and how you talk about it in your book. And I'm sure you outline it. This is a great book. I, I have it, and I think if you are interested in, in figuring out how to reverse your thyroid dysfunctions, I think it's a great book to get. But you talk about your five plan in detail in your book. Tell us about it. So the first step is always to look at, you know, looking at those toxic and inflammatory foods, removing those from your diet, the glutens, the dairies. Make sure you're adding in thyroid supporting foods like we already mentioned that have the vitamin A, the selenium, the zinc, the iodine, and then looking at your gut, seeing if you have leaky gut. Do you have any infections like candida or SIBO going on in your gut? Of course, have quizzes and ways exactly to That's test awesome. and treat that. Looking at your toxin levels, looking at how they're coming in, trying to get them out relieving your stress. We can't all get rid of our stress, Correct. but relieving our stress. And then there are a number of infections that are very specifically related to thyroid disease. So working with your doctor to get tested for those. And here's the thing, you know, what you want to do is with your diet, simple rules, more plants, less animals if you can, as clean as possible. You know, I'm, I'm totally, you know, one of these doctors who, who really practice conventional medicine, but I also love functional medicine. Let's say you have some of our viewers who doesn't have that kind of doctor, how would you recommend talking to your doctor about some of these issues, especially when they're not getting better? Well, so I really wrote this book. I too am trained as a conventional physician right. and then you know went into functional medicine, but not everybody can come to see me Correct. or they don't have a functional medicine doctor in their, in their area. So I wrote this book as a guide to be able to take to your doctor and it tells you exactly awesome. what tests to get, how to help him or her interpret awesome. those tests and then what to do about it. So there's a program that you can kind of do on your own, but since it involves thyroid and testing and potentially supplemental thyroid hormone for people, you need to work with a physician. So this book, you do not need to be working with a functional medicine physician. You can take this to your conventional doctor as well. And then give them the tests they need because often they may not even know. Thank you so much for the yeah, work you do. Yeah, thanks for having you're me. Helping really a lot of, no, but you're helping a lot of people. We appreciate it. And she's going to help a lot of you, I'm sure, that are, that are watching and don't have answers. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Parthen Andy. And if you enjoyed that video, you're going to love the next one. It's full of incredible information to help you start your health hero journey.